G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in this video we're going to talk about creating an integration between Marketing Cloud and Slack to send you a Slack notification when one of your automations fails in Marketing Cloud. I have covered previous topics with Salesforce and Slack integration previously and so fair warning that this one will be a bit more advanced so if you're not comfortable with server-side JavaScript, the REST API or the Slack integrations then you may find some parts of the solution a bit harder to follow along with. I'll publish the code online later if you have a look for yourself, but fair warning there is no warranty for this code so try at your own risk. Also be advised that some of the REST APIs we'll be using in this solution are not documented and therefore are not official and are liable to change without notice. So with all that out of the way, let's have a look at our solution for this video. Now our goal is to create a notification system from Marketing Cloud to let us know in Slack once an automation has errored. We'll achieve this by creating an error automation notification, which will send an email into a Slack channel using the email integration feature. Now, once the email appears in our Slack channel, we then use a slash command to communicate with our Slack app to then request a cloud page within Marketing Cloud. That cloud page will have some SSJS code inside of it, which will find the error automation, return some information about what went wrong, and then formulate an output which will go back through our Slack app and publish the output into our Slack channel as a response. So before we get started developing our solution for today, let's have a look at the final result. I have an automation in Automation Studio that I've run and it has failed. What I can now do is load up Slack into my channel of choice and type in a slash command. In this case, I've created one called status report. When I press enter, it'll make a call into my cloud page to return back the information about the automation that failed. In this case, the automation called I hope this automation doesn't fail has errored. Returns back when it errored, the activity on which it errored, which step, the reason why it errored, as well as a link to the automation itself. But I can click that link as long as I have an active token or a cookie on my current instance. It'll then load up the automation itself into the workflow overview. And there it is there, I can see my activity here failed. I hover over it, the reason being a primary key violation. So as you can see, that's a pretty cool solution. Let's now go through the steps that we have to do to recreate that for ourselves. The first thing we'll need is we'll need to have an automation that will contain an error. Next, we'll have to make an integration between the Automation Studio email and Slack using the email Slack integration. Next, we'll create a cloud page which will have our SSJS code, which I'll publish on GitHub. Next, we have to create a Slack app which we'll use as our medium between our Slack channel and our SSJS page. And then finally, we'll do an end-to-end -end test to make sure that our solution works and we can be notified when an error occurs in Automation Studio. So firstly, to create an automation which will contain an error, we can simply make a single step automation which can contain an SQL query activity. In this case, I've made an SQL query that is going to try and upsert a row into a data extension that has a primary key. And as a result, when it tries to upsert that row a second time, it's going to cause the primary key violation error. Now the trick for this solution is we have to specify an email address to send if an error occurs inside the automation. To do this, we're going to be using the send an email to Slack functionality. And this is in fact a paid subscription feature to send an email address to a channel or direct message. So you have to make sure that you do have a paid version of Slack to use this integration. But don't worry if you don't have this version though, you still can use these slash commands to return back information about recently failed automations, which we'll cover shortly. So now we've got an error which will occur inside of Automation Studio and a way to notify ourselves inside Slack once that error occurs using the email integration. Next, let's build our Slack app and SSJS cloud page. For our cloud page, we're going to use a JSON code resource page type. So I've gone ahead and created a cloud page with the code resource type of JSON and pasted in the content from the GitHub repository. Now I'll put a link to this file in the description of the video below. As you can see in the cloud page, it's a few lines of SSJS code. So I'll step you through what it's doing. The first thing we're doing is setting up some configuration for our file. You will have to use an API for this request. So you'll have to go in and get your auth URL, the client ID, client secret. And of course, once we create our Slack API, the Slack webhook address as well. The GTM is a modifier for your current time zone. This is to make sure that Slack publishes the correct error time for the automation that failed. You can also use the notify feature to notify yourself or other members of the channel if you're wanting to use this feature inside of a more public channel in your Slack instance. Next, we're making some details for what kinds of activity types could fail in your automation. 
We then get our token and access tokens. We build up our REST API. We then contact our stack to understand which stack version that we are on. So we will need that stack ID to make some links into our automations and activities. We then get the list of automations. Now this function is going to go into our list of automations using the automation API and get back the top 50 automations sorting from last runtime. The goal here is to find out which automation has errored. Return back that errored ID as the automation we want to find out more information about. Once we have the error automation ID and the ID is not zero, we can then call the automation error information. If we scroll down, the get automation error is going to get the definition of the failed automation. So it's going to try and find out where it failed. Now it's going to go through all the steps and all the worker instances to find out which activity failed. Once it finds one that failed, it's then going to go through and get the message of why it failed, the ID of the object, the name of the object, and so on and so forth. Once it has all that information, it's then going to publish the information back in as a message, which we can then send to ourselves in our Slack channel using our send message Slack function. Now that's a lot of really dense server-side JavaScript. So I recommend taking a minute now to pause the video and have a read through the codes for yourself to make sure you understand it before you copy and paste this into your own cloud page. Now we do have to use the REST API for this function, so you will have to go into setup and into install packages and to create a new API key. You'll have to make an API integration component using server to server of course, and you'll have to make sure that you have the scope of automations and read. It's the only permission that you need for this activity as all we're doing is reading the status of your automations. And once your API key is complete, you can copy the client ID, client secret, and the authentication based URI back into your cloud page code in the authentication URL, client ID, and client secret sections. Once complete, you can publish the cloud page and then copy the URL of the published cloud page. So the next thing we have to do is to create our Slack app. And to do this, we go to api.slack.com and click on the create an app button. We then choose the from scratch option and choose our app name. I'll choose automation notification. Then we choose our workspace. We then click on the create app button. Once that's done, we'll have to provide the features and functionality for our app. Now this app does require two functions, the incoming webhooks and the slash commands. I'll use the slash commands first. Clicking on slash commands, we then choose the create new command button. Once the page loads, we can choose the command we want to use to activate this activity. I'm going to choose slash status report. Looks good. So for status report, our request URL is going to be the URL from our cloud page. So we can go back to our cloud page, copy the link, go back into our Slack app and paste it in. Next, we can choose our description. This will give automation error details. Perfect. Once completed, we can press save, which will save this slash command against our app. The next step is to go into our webhooks. We scroll into our functions and features, we can find our incoming webhooks. Click on the webhooks, we want to create a new webhook. Once we turn it on, we want to create a new webhook for our workspace. So we go OK, we have to choose which channel inside of the workspace we want to publish notifications back onto. We can choose our channel, and I've got my dev channel, I'll go allow. And once the webhook has been completed, we can copy that webhook and go back into our cloud page and paste the webhook URL into our Slack webhook section. With that complete, we can go back into our Slack app and then update our Slack app to make sure it's installed with all the correct permissions. By clicking reinstall, we can choose our workspace, and make sure you choose allow. We can now go back into Slack into our channel of choice and then type in our slash command, in this case status report, for our automation notification to give us our details about our failed automation. Then press send which will call our API, call our cloud page and there we are, return back our failed automation from earlier. Now this activity will only return the most recently failed automation. So what happens if there's been no recent failed automations, or at least none in the last 50 automations that have run? You can try that by now deleting our failed automation and going back into Automation Studio and seeing that there are no currently failed automations. We can now go back into Slack and retry our slash command, again typing in status report, 
pressing enter and we should now get no errors found because there are no automations that have recently failed or at least none in the last 50 automation runs. So there we have it, a Slack app that's been built inside of a cloud page using the JSON code resource to investigate which automation has most recently failed, return back the reasons for why it failed and publish those reasons back into your Slack channel. All of course be notified based on the Slack email integration which you get as soon as that email comes through from a failed automation. I hope you've enjoyed this Slack and Marketing Cloud integration. If you have, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud and Slack integration videos.